in a world. Four friends, one mission. Mikey, what are you doing? I'm doing the thing for the podcast. It's not that hard, bud. Dude, just say the name. Fine. It's the Freedom Friends Podcast. Well, it's some day of the week. Yeah, Friday. There you go. And uh, we're sitting in kind of a circle. I've got a stick in my left hand and a drink in my right hand. And I'm making positive eye contact. That can only mean we're about to do one thing. We're about to masturbate, boys. There it is. This is time for the uh, Freedom Friends Master Debate, uh, where we invent a problem and then tell you what our uh, mediocre solution is going to be to it. Uh, it's brought to you by Freedom Friends Tobacco, freedomfriendstobacco.com. You can use the code FTFO. If you want the rest of the discounts, go to the what, description. What's that? What, what's that now? I don't fucking know. <laughs> uh, you can go in the description. What, what? Do you click stuff? Do you smell burnt toast right now? Yeah, it's getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> everything, everything tastes like nickels. <laughs> Here, you need to hold a different stick, real quick. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. We just gotta make sure you're okay. Uh, uh, yeah, whatever. The description can pay the bills. I'm not doing this anymore. This War, is... Warfightertobacco.com. There you go. The Freedom Friends Tobacco.com. <laughs> That's uh, use that code FTFO gets yourself. 15% hey, I got the off. code right. You did. You did. You did, you did get that. Uh, Icy Tech Coolers for those who get it. It is FF10. Freedom Friends 10. Freedom Friends 10. Freedom Friends 10. I don't know. I listen to this fucking podcast on a regular, even when I'm not on the podcast, and I still don't remember the goddamn discount code. Uh, it's so better than me. Oh, wellness.us for all your CBD needs. Use that code uh, Freedom Friends 25 for a quarter off your order over there. And uh, grillyoassoff.com slash Freedom Friends Podcast. And if you're too stupid to pipe, type that all in at the same time, there's a link. There's a link. And not only is there a link, I think you can use Freedom Friends Podcast as a discount code. Or Freedom Friends. Or just or try email it. James. Yeah, just email James if you can't get it to work. James at curlyourassoff.com. Yeah. <laughs> also, I got a shout out. I guess there's some no, Freedom no, Friends. A better, way to do, a better way to do it is yeah. purchase your order and yeah. then email. Oh, absolutely. No, 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 no. And then reach out to your credit card company and and charge back 15%. That's the better. Oh, way it's a dick. Move. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I do. I do got to shout out some of the freedom friends out there that have uh, either found my other podcast or found the store and are now placing order because there's nerds in our audience and I love you all. But they either found Warhammered or they found the uh, my my store's website and they've been going over there and I've been getting comments that say like, "Freedom the," oh no, I can say it, "Freedom the fuck on" yeah. and stuff like that <laughs> in the comment and stuff like that. So. uh it's good to know that there's more nerds out there. We 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 still love you guys. So uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate you. the the freedom the fuck on comments on orders when they come through. It's on great. Fighter. It comes it's through really and nice. it just has that in there. And it, it yeah. So it's uh the community is strong. Right. Anyways, Justin, what do you got for us? All right, boys. Mm-hmm. All, All right, right boys. boys. So I want to know what are some things that people make their whole identity? Military service. <laughs> that was perfect timing. <laughs> I was mid I was mid draw. I couldn't say it. I'm 40 and I spent three and a half years in the military. It's my entire identity. <sighs> yeah. What are some other ones? Motorcycles. Yeah. Yeah. Cars. Only, only fans. <laughs> <laughs> Not wrong. At least, at least that one's profitable, right? Yeah, yeah. Everything else costs a lot of money. Uh, bourbon and whiskey, like the reviewers. Yeah, I don't even. <laughs> no, I, I don't even think it's restricted to reviewers, but it's definitely yeah. Well, you guys, you get guys out there getting their whiskey sommelier license, and I'm like, I, okay, is there such a thing? Uh-huh. Apparently. Oh, I'm down. <laughs> but the fact that you have to say whiskey sommelier means that they, they should have their own word. Yeah. Yeah. It's called a drinker of whiskey. Yeah. Connoisseur if you want to get French. <laughs> um, I don't know. This is, this is really close to what we talked about last week. And it's the whole like people don't have a self identity. So they have to latch onto something else. 
Unless so, you're fucking stupid. Yeah. Or you were. <laughs> um, I mean, everybody's got to attach to something. It, yeah. yeah. Like, you can't just be like, I stand for nothing. Like, you can't be that guy. There was actually, so, uh, Scott, you'll dig this. So, my wife and I were watching a new show on Netflix called Outlast. And if you've ever seen Alone, oh, yeah. which we've talked about on this. Yeah. So, Outlast is alone, but you're on a team. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and a, none a of them have team. any idea what they're doing. A bitchy team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there was this chick on there oh, that everything favorite. she did was it's because I'm a female and they underestimate me. It's because I'm a female there and they underestimate me. And it's like, nope. The only one underestimating you is you, which is why you have to keep saying this. Like, if you have to put a qualifier in front of something awesome that you did, we've talked about this too. It's like female geneticist unlocks this code or whatever it's like the real title is geneticist unlocks this code it doesn't matter if you're purple trans so whatever you know figures out how to make the longer lasting light bulb and it's like what it really should be is engineer invents longer lasting light bulb the rest of those writer titles that you need to put on don't actually fucking matter unless you win woman of the year and you're a dude. And yeah. you're a dude. So, then, then they matter a little bit more. You have to say trans woman of the year yep. because it matters a little bit more in that See, instance. I was waiting for you to make the joke that, you know, even men are better at being women. Well, I, I make it every show. Yeah, so. really. the, the, the two that I wanted to talk about, and I didn't know if I really wanted to or not, but I'm going to anyways now, Do it. is the LGBTQ LMNOP community. Yeah, yeah. I think you're just supposed to say plus now. I did. Yeah. Um, but that, the community as a whole, uh, because very rarely do you meet somebody that says anything related to that and that's not their entire identity. I'm trying to figure out how you can form an identity over who you fuck. It's like, not even I'm, who you fuck. Well, it's, it's who the, who the people that you might know or don't even know fuck and you're defending them. But, th- but that's the whole community, right? Like it's, it's, it's an identity based on who you fuck. Like if I walked around with a t-shirt that said, I heart pussy. Oh, you'd be a bigot. But if I walked, but if I was a chick that wore a shirt that said, I heart you'd be pussy. A hero. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't, but if, if I wore a t-shirt that said, I heart dick as a dude, then it's like, so that's be so my brave. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what? You're not wrong. <laughs> but it's, it's just like who you're fucking is not an identity. It's just not. I'm sorry. It's not. What like, about what about? What that about, doesn't mean I'm against it. Like, there, there's a fuck master, whoever you want. There's a master race of of wow. identity out there. <laughs> it is the got, the, got that button. <laughs> you want to you want to rephrase uh, that imagine, for a second, buddy? <laughs> imagine okay, this one. Imagine <laughs> if you were a vegan CrossFitter who was gay. You would never shut up. And you'd up. sound like me because your voice is gone. <laughs> like you wouldn't be able to. <laughs> but which one would you pick? Oh, wow. Which one? I would think you that's pick? kind of like this military is like, schools. This you is just get a triple tab. No, and- it's. it's <laughs> not, right? <laughs> I, was I was gonna say it's Sophie's choice, but yeah, that's yeah. fucking that works too. <laughs> that works you, too. You're not required to wear any of them. But, but if you want you're to, gonna wear them all. <laughs> it's like the people that have the skill tabs just yeah. stacked up. Just yeah, it's just I don't know. And this is really close to last week, where it, it just turns into like people want to be special so fucking bad. Yeah. So the most mediocre, mundane shit all of a sudden becomes a personality. Trait. And you are asking white males right now like what our identity is or what we, you know what I mean? Before we go further with this conversation, I think it is important to say that I can vouch for everybody on the show. We don't actually give a fuck. No, no, no. If you were, if you were a dude, that's now a chick that likes to fuck chicks, come on, whatever rock on. If you were a chick, that's now a dude that likes to fuck. If you're a dude that likes dudes, if you're a chick that likes chicks, if you're a chick that dresses like a dude, but you're still into dude, like <laughs> it's the birds and the bees and the bees I, I, and the bees I and the birds and the birds a, and the birds that think they're bees. I but don't they're not. fucking care if you can just prove <laughs> that you're not a shitty person. Not that you're not a shit bag. Cause all of my friends are shit bags. 
just that you're not a shitty person, I'm willing to hang out with you. I don't actually give a fuck. Unless you don't eat meat, then I draw the line. Yeah, I just don't. <laughs> I just don't understand. Just kidding. I don't. Well, I just don't get it. It's like, I don't eat meat. Have you guys seen how? I, the, have you seen Gwyneth Paltrow nowadays? No, but did you see the TikTok video of the dude who was a vegan his whole life and the first time he ate steak? And like he smells it and he like dry heaves a little bit. And then he like, you hear in the background, somebody's like, dip it in A1. And so the guy dips it in A1. And I was like, oh. And he put it in his mouth and he took like two Did bites. Did you watch him ascend? And they were like, yeah. <laughs> and like the first two bites, his face was all weird. And then all of a sudden he was just like, Oh my god! And then he just starts shoveling the plate in his face. <laughs> yeah. Then you all of a sudden understand what the Buddhists are talking about, and it's like this dude's really this dude's found a new realm of consciousness. It's, it's like that one time we were hanging out with that reporter who was kind of anti-gun, and mm. then she oh, shot yeah. a machine gun for the first time. Oh, I loved it, and went through five hundred dollars in my ammo because <laughs> she fell. And then like I'm recording a reporter and her cameraman. I'm using her cell phone to record them shooting machine guns. Like, yeah, that was like, probably the only firearm related article that wasn't skewed when it was published. Yeah. And, it, <laughs> and, and I think it started out to be, Oh, it was good. Yeah. hundred percent. A lot of that stuff, man, is it's just a, your ignorance has given you a position of power and you were speaking so vehemently from a position of ignorance that as soon as you find out the real like, like, like as soon as you experience that side, I wouldn't even say facts like or the for real example, deal or whatever. If we actually ever tried Pappy, I have. <laughs> we might be different than I have, are. and it's still overrated. I <laughs> I never once said it wasn't good. I just said it's overrated. Yeah. Um, what are some other groups though that are strongly identify with their groups? You know what? I'll say it, and I'm gonna Marines. <laughs> oh yeah fuck can you fault cults though that's like a it's like a different thing uh to be honest with you and i'm one of them uh or at least i was one of the ones that viewed it as a personality trait was is cigar smokers yeah um there is look i love cigars I have a huge collection a lot of my friends are in the industry like but the fact of the matter is, is that enjoying something and making it part of your personality are two different things. Now, I will, I traveled 600 miles round trip to go to that cigar festival with you guys yeah. in Dallas. Half of it was I wanted to smoke cigars with my friends. Most of it was I wanted to go spend time with my friends. Another part of it was another hobby that I got to enjoy while I got to do it. But being a cigar smoker doesn't make you an individual. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a fuck ton of us. It's not a unique trait yeah. to you because you like cigars. It, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm phrasing this wrong for a lot of it. When it comes down to me on what bugs me about people that pick something as a personality trait is the superiority complex that comes with it. Yeah. It's the, Oh, I know more than you do. This is better than what you enjoy in it. This is, you don't know. Fuck. Like it's, it's this, it just shows how unimportant you are everywhere else that you need to try and fucking gatekeep or shit all over somebody else. The Pappy thing that we got made fun of for and whatever, which was well done. But is it really that you think it's better or did you really just get butt hurt because somebody called you out on the fact that you spent the money on something that's not that good? And fuck it, I'll say it for the cigar listeners that are out there. Opus, Opus X, one of the most overrated fucking cigars you can buy. There are some that are very good. They're all released about three years too early. Most of them smoke like shit. Like they're not as solid as you fucking think that we've got cigar smokers in the audience right now that are disagreeing with me. They're not worth what you pay for. They're just not unless you, unless they're aged out. You show me a 2011. That's got 10, 12 years on it. I'll smoke it. No problem. hundred percent. Talked about it in the last show, that part of a D that I was given. It was too old. Yeah. So it didn't uh, taste like anything. Smoked great. Didn't have a taste. We we've talked about this multiple times in the show, but I'm a member of a wine club from one uh vineyard up in Fredericksburg. Well, I got offered to become a 
I don't even know what the fuck they even call it. Oh, I'm like sure they pick some sort of tier black member, black diamond platinum it's, shit. You know, whatever. exclusive. Yeah. We only take so many people. You can put your name on a list and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, fuck it. I'll put my name on a list. Two weeks later, they call me. They're like, hey, we got a spot that's open. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to buy, I had to spend, I can't even remember what it was. It was, it was more than what I buy, you know, my wine every quarter is. And, uh, but then they, the, the, Good thing about it is they're honest with you and they say, okay, cool. You got to spend the money now, but you don't pick up this special wine until the fall. And then you have to sit on it for five years <laughs> before you should drink it. Yeah. And I'm sure. like, oh, 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 so what's the perks to this? And they're like, well, wait, the wait, perks okay, to this. Well, do, you mind, you, the, do you mind me asking how much the membership was? Uh, I think it was like 500 bucks. Okay. And I get six bottles. Scott, if I give you five hundred dollars right now, will you give me two boxes of cigars in five years? No, 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 no. no you, I'm you get, to you get now. now, but you have to wait five years yeah, to yeah. smoke them. And that way, I don't have to hear you, bitch, because you'll forget. I'll forget. We'll all forget. Yeah, <laughs> and that's why they give it to you right up front. Yeah. They're like, here, just don't drink these for five years. Right. But w- what it also allows you to do is now you can access the wines that they've produced on, and on this oh, thing. Okay, so previous I had that, years, I had that at my that are already aged in my retail store. Yep. I had a vendor that got a hold of me. He was like, hey. Because of your size and what you've spent, we would like to offer you to go to this highest tier of retailers. So you're going to spend a bunch of money with us. Yeah. And what that's going to give you is the permission to spend more money with us. Yep. So that we'll put you on a website and say. To get rare stuff hey, that you can only get from X places. But only one more than I could get as yeah. a standard retailer anyways. Right. So, but we're going to put you on a website that says, hey, this guy's got a bigger dick than you. Yeah. But like, I don't care about the big dick thing, the, what, how they got I, me. I am now old enough where I am totally comfortable with the fact that I've got a small dick. Right. What, where it got me was- they you gave don't believe me, me, ask Scott. They gave me a sample of their, their wines, like the previous years that I now have access to be able to get. And they were really fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, son of a bitch. I'm like, okay. That's the downfall is that I know my dick is as sad as it was last year. <laughs> it's just, it's not getting better with age. <laughs> <laughs> gravity though gravity, gravity might yeah. help eventually unfortunately no, it's gravity only, f- only works on it's one only portion works on the balls yeah. it doesn't work on the rest of it <laughs> just which makes the other one look like it's shrinking <laughs> it's bullshit i got i got a group for y'all uh people that are way too obsessed with major league sports Okay, so I'm, I'm where for, is Mikey on my fucking? Well, I'm, I'm originally from Boston, yeah, and so that doesn't work for me See, because that do, is just the norm. We do have a host that's actually from Boston. <laughs> the other one from Baltimore, <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's just it is literally just the norm. Yeah, like if you walk into a bar and you don't know who won the last Pats or Red Sox or Bruins or who Celtics game, you're like. You get shunned. You get castrated. Do you know what's terrifying? Like, what the fuck you mean you don't is know who the, fucking won a, the game? A city that is the home of the revolution and the birth of this country. Its identity is based on a fucking shitty baseball team. Sports. Okay. No, it's all inclusive. Okay. Any Boston or New England sports team that's based out of Massachusetts is what their identity is from. My point still stands. No, I get it. It's like, it's like you have... All of this that you could be like, look, the rest of you that are quote unquote patriotic or whatever, we're literally the home of where it all fucking started. Yeah. Like, so if you're from here, you were born in the place that is the birthplace of this country, but go socks. It, yep. Like, it's just <laughs> yep. like, what the fuck? Like that, that whole city's reputation is based on sports and being a dick. Pretty much. Pretty much. And forgetting yeah. the R's in every word. Yeah, yeah, there's only 25 letters in the in the Boston alphabet. <laughs> Until you cross the river. If you cross, the, literally, you can be in Boston, you can see across the river because mm-hmm. the river's about as wide as this desk. Like, well, in spots, some of it's wider. The one that goes through the city is about as wide as this desk. The Charles, and the only but sometimes it's and wider. the only people on that river are, are the ones from the other side of the river, or people from Harvard rowing crew. Which is the other side of the river. <laughs> it's like, I'm not wrong. Like, none of them are from Boston. But then you cross that river and it's like. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just it's night and day. Well, it's funny. You, like you can tell other. where somebody's from in Massachusetts based on uh, on their accent. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then there are there's a shitload of people that don't have an accent because they're Boston, not from there. Boston and Cambridge are separated by what fifty feet. Well, physically and metaphorically. The, how wide is the river between? Yeah. There's a bridge that goes between Boston and Cambridge. That might be 300 feet it's if you're, on maybe, a good day. <laughs> maybe if the river's high. Yeah. Like, right? And there is a night and day difference. Metaphorically, it's a different planet. <laughs> you might as well have flown to the other side of the country. Yeah. Like, it's night and day difference. Yeah. But no, if you go to the North Shore... But right, I, versus I, people from the South Shore versus I'm shit people from Cape Cod, I love Western Boston. Mass. I had a fucking blast in Boston. It's, it's a fun I, town. My wife and I want to go back. Yep. It's a great town. The food is amazing. The bars are great. And as dickish as everybody is, because that's what you expect, they are some of the most welcoming motherfuckers you'll ever meet. Yeah. Now, they may look at you and be like, hey, fucker, your drink's empty. Like that, right. that may be the line that you get. But what that means is... Come over here and I'll give you a fucking drink yeah. and we're going to have a good time together. Like it is, I've never felt more welcomed and more insulted at the same time. And it just, it fucks your whole world up. Cause you're just like, like I think I should be mad. It's like, I, 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 well, that's like when a British guy calls you a cunt, you really, you can't be mad. You at can't it. be mad at it. But Boston, you understand why everybody there wants to fight like all the time. And it's because of the way they talk to you. And you're just like, yeah. Okay. But we're drinking together. So but I, we kind of want to fight each other at the same right. time. But at the end of the night, like you're going to make sure I get home and I'm like, I'm safe. And like, it's, there, a, it's a weird fucking world. I lived there for three and a half years in my, in like my mid twenties. And at that point in my life, uh, all I did was drink and fight and ride motorcycles. Now, and that was you just summed up Boston. That was the only place that I lived in after I got out of the military that I did not get in one single fight. I don't know how. I never, I, I was walking the streets of Boston at 2 a.m. still bar hopping and stuff like that. Never once felt unsafe. No. Mm. Not, not at all. Matter of fact, I think if anybody had fucked with me, a bunch of locals would have just shown up and been like, the fuck are you doing? Yeah, why and, are you picking on this gay kid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, back to, back to the, the subject at hand. Like, I don't have a problem with somebody identifying with any group, right? Claim it your group, make it your identity. I don't care. The problem is when you try to when you try to become superior because you're in that group to another group, that's the problem. Right. But if you, you know, everybody's got to identify as something at some point in their life. And it may change, right? But um, but yeah, like like I don't yeah, as as long as you're happy in your group, like everybody wants to be happy in a group. I think we're talking extremes, though. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, like I can deal with annoying. I can't deal with like disrespectful. I'm going to start a riot because I, you know what I mean. Like, I don't know. No, well, that's that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Extremes. Yeah. You know, we're not talking about the average person who has hobbies that are very influential in their life. We're talking about the people that they latch onto one thing and that is that is it. But that's fine. You know, like as long like, as you're it's it's like the guy that owns every piece of Harley Davidson anything. Yeah. His <laughs> the belt loop, the pants, the belt, the boots, the shirt, the everything. Your that's, coffee mug. The, yeah, and everything I, and goes I'm, you know, I'm fine with that and, as long as he doesn't tell me that I have to own Yeah. Well, but, but, no, yeah, but or, your bike, or, your right. Yamaha is a piece, a piece of, shit. of shit because yeah, it doesn't yeah. say Harley. Yeah, right. Right. You know, that's yeah. where it's like, okay, dude, fuck you. A hundred percent. And that's the problem I have. Like, yeah. It, look, as a writer, I'm new to the world. But Steve but you picked a Harley, so you're you're in the right group. Well, if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna buy, buy the best. So <laughs> not that jab shit, right? <laughs> fuck that. But like Steve was here. Steve's been riding longer than all of us have been fucking alive. Yeah. And he walked right over to your bike and was like, Well, they did a big change in this year from this yeah. year. And like he knew all about your bike. Yeah. It was no disrespect. Yeah. It was just a for him, it was two wheels is fucking two wheels. I don't give a shit what's underneath you yeah. it's just two wheels is two wheels and that's the important part yeah so if you're going to be passionate about something cool be passionate about something but don't let it deter don't let it start creating fractures and who you're willing to talk to 
because you're passionate about this thing. Yeah. I love Warfighter Tobacco. You guys have a cigar that we were talking about it before the show. That if I could just buy a humidor that just had 200 sticks of that cigar, it's a Warfighter cigar. And I've smoked a fuck ton of fucking cigars. You guys just happen to make the one that if I know I want that cigar right now, that's going to make me happy. You guys happen to make the stick. I'm very lucky that you're also my friends. So it makes it infinitely yeah. available. But <laughs> if I'd found you in a humidor, I, I can honestly say, I don't think it would have been because I know them. I'm a fan, right? It's just quality. I still smoke other stuff as do I. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't, yeah. but I can't think of another cigar right now that if I was going to fill a humidor with just that cigar, it was going to be the go-to cigar. That's the cigar. I love Padron 64s. I love, there's a lot of stuff that, um, like the Laranja stuff that's out there right now is absolutely fantastic. There's some sticks out there that are great, but it's not a, I'm going to tell somebody else they're fucked up because they're not smoking Warfighter. Yeah. It, like it, it's be passionate about something, but you don't get to tell other people they're fucked up because they're not, they don't share your passion. Yeah. I think another piece to it also is don't be a fucking gatekeeper. Like those people that latch onto something and it's like, I can be the only one that yeah. finds this amazing. You're, you're too late. You're late to the game. No, yeah. fuck you. The, like, mi the military is one of the, best examples great of that. fucking equalizer man. like when we, fucking we did eib before we oh, deployed yeah yeah, yeah. You, there were straight up badge protectors there were guys that were just looking to fuck you up yeah like nobody's gonna get true blue nobody's fucking if i had none of you fucks would get this badge and blah 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 it's like why because i can do what you did there's goofy shit even beyond yeah. the eib the rock of the marn shit that fucking cord you get to wear if you're part of the rock of the marn they have that fucking red yeah, yeah. and gray yeah. cable or whatever they get to wear. We had guys I graduated AIT with. So we're talking none of us had been in a unit. Yeah. We had been in trade off the whole fucking right. time. Well, when you graduate AIT, it's full dress and anything you were authorized to wear because you have your unit assignment yeah. is supposed to be on your uniform. Like that's by the reg. If, if you already have a unit assignment, Whatever awards they have, so unit awards, not personal awards. Yeah. If you know what the fuck I'm talking about, go look. There's this thing called unit awards. So you're, it's all supposed to be in uniform. We had two guys in my AIT that got assigned to Rock of the Marn. So they got authorized to wear the cable. Well, according to 670-1, your uniform is supposed to reflect any and all personal and or unit awards that currently exist for your assignment. So they showed up to graduation with everything on and there was part of Tradoc, literally drill sergeants that belonged to the unit. It was like, where the fuck do you have that cable on? And it's like, they belong to the unit. Like, and I tell you this, they owned that fucking cable in like World War One. So you weren't a fucking right. alive when they got it either. Yeah. So, which means that you're wearing somebody else's fucking award. Like, what the fuck are you doing? And so that's the shit that bugs me. It's like, yeah. be proud of it. You don't get to, yeah, like he said, you don't get to gatekeep yeah. it. You don't or, get to get or, in the way. Or like, what was the army saying that nobody was to wear combat patches anymore? Oh, because be people felt left out. Because people felt left out if they didn't have a combat patch. Did you go to combat? Yeah, like that. Yeah, like, I earned this motherfucker. Yeah, I'm wearing this like, bitch. Yeah, that's kind of fucked. It's not just that. And it's like, oh, you didn't go to combat? Fucking congratulations. <laughs> like, fucking, <laughs> I'm a little bit more jealous of you. Like, right. it sucks. Yeah. Like, it's not a great time. Like, I, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand this whole, no. like, my shit sucks worse than you, so you should respect it. And it's like, why? <laughs> but yeah, the, the, I mean, the two biggest ones, that I was, the EIB Expert Infantry, infantry Miss Badge. Uh, I have, which I have. And then the um, Expert Field Medical Badge. They're so, hard as fuck to get. But it's not. That and guys well, the, with the scuba bubble. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. Well, that, <laughs> you know, it's, like, holy you shit. Know, you know, it's just as hard as the school. Getting into the school. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I had a guy I went to film school with who uh, helped me make my documentary too. And he was an 18 series guy, lost his leg above the knee. It's the only reason he's not still in. And this dude like lost his leg less than a year later, climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, like without his leg. Yeah. Great fucking dude. That's because he's light. He weighs less. He weighs less. <laughs> it's yeah. 100% true. Advantages. Uh, he's actually in, do you know that book that Bush did, The Portraits of Heroes? Yeah. 
but he's in that book. Oh, so cool. he's in there. Now, I'm not going to shout him out because he's actually super humble, but um, great fucking guy. Couldn't count a better friend. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, but he was a triple tower and did some, I know a lot of his stories and did some hardcore shit like where the rest of us just kind of go like, cool. I was ROTC. That's fucking great. <laughs> like, <you're> fucking, <laughs> so, uh, and the only skill badge that he like kind of flaunted was his scuba bubble. Mm-hmm. And he had a Coors light hat, like a dad style cap that he wore that just said Coors light on the front that he wore every day to fucking film school. Cause both of us were veterans that decided to go do this. But on the side of it was his blacked out fucking scuba bubble skill patch. And I was like, I got fuck all to say <laughs> like, <laughs> you fucking win buddy. Like, I don't give a fuck. Airborne, air assault, whatever. You got that fucking scuba bubble and it's like, yep, you are more hood than the rest of us. So like, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. It's like airborne school is the easiest school in the military. It's a three day school that's three weeks long. But it's the easiest school. Like there's no physical requirements that you have to really do. Like if you if you pass basic training, you can pass airborne school. Hands it's, down. It's no questions. It's the asked. only reason that I'm salty that I don't have my fucking wings. Right. But air assault school, same requirements, except if you don't have perfectly clean, brand new, never used equipment, you will not pass that school. So from what I understand, and I never went to air assault. Other than that. I didn't go to air assault or air 10 toughest days in the military. So from what I understand, though. Which is not true. But that's the saying. That's the saying. But from what I understand, it's essentially, can you get smoked for nine days? No, we didn't get smoked. smoked. So that you can repel on the 10th. You don't even get smoked. No, no. The the hardest part about air assault school is the knots. Learning how to tie the knots. That was it. Yeah. I mean, okay. So knots, nomenclature, and and, uh, aircraft ID and aircraft knowledge. Because they do ask you some kind yeah. of technical shit when it comes down to like what's you have this to know thing? you have to know how to s- prepare a Humvee to, to for sling, sling load. load. Like now, you have to know the proper. Neither one of you guys have Pathfinder, like right? No. So that was Pathfinder. Always, so Pathfinder that was a always a skill badge. School. That was the um, for me. That was the Grail. Yeah, I wanted like, that when I reenlisted. They wouldn't give it to me, and I was stationed at Fort Campbell. So it's not like they had to fund it. Yeah. So my like, unit had money Just to send people to Pathfinder, but you could only go if you had the airborne qual, ah, and they couldn't get me an airborne slot, so I couldn't fucking go. Uh, and I was like, funny. fucking damn it. Was yeah. uh, were the did y'all ever have to take like written tests at air assault school? Yeah. Were they multiple choice? They were. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> airborne yeah. school was multiple choice. Too. I don't even remember the test at airborne school. Yeah. It, I Me mean, either. it was like literally airborne school is like I can I have nights and weekends off and I can go drink. Like this I, is fuck. All I have to do is not quit. No, are you okay. ready? I went you ready home, for some bullshit. I went home every night at air assault school. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, because yeah. you were already at Campbell. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to hear some bullshit? Huh. So, our father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven. <laughs> Justin and I's dad, shocker, if you haven't figured it out by now, Justin's my little brother. Uh, when I in when I belonged to the 341st Psychological Operations, he was the battalion XO. It was the worst fucking 90 days of my fucking life belonging <laughs> into that command line. Because my last name is Broom. Yeah. It's not like I could fake it. Yeah. Obviously. And he wanted to check in on my unit all the fucking time. And I still couldn't get a fucking airborne slot. And I was like, you should be mad at your dad for not putting oh, the paperwork I, no, in. Oh, no. <laughs> there has been several discussions about like, out of all the orders you could have fucking cut. Yeah. What the fuck? This wasn't fucking one. Yep. This fucker got it in his contract. Okay. Well, all just because right. he's smarter doesn't mean that you, you say talk shit. fuck all, sir. You sit the fuck down and you don't fucking bump your dick sucker at all. Please now, tell me your dad helped with the contract. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, though. I traded out my ten thousand dollar signing bonus. Would have done it in a fucking heartbeat because after the taxes, I got a whopping thirty two hundred dollars. Yes, Justin, but the thing was, I was going Justin, to an airborne airborne unit. Justin, so either way, I Justin, was going to. Did you ever Justin. seen the K-pop patch? Yeah, Justin. but we were like actually airborne. It, so is all of K-pop. <laughs> Justin, would ten grand be worth not being able to talk shit? Valid point. Valid point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fucking wrong sure. here. Some things just don't have a monetary value. <laughs> so then when I fucking finally changed and I left the full command, like literally went over to a whole new division. 
And they were like, cool, but we're on deployment ready status. So we're sending nobody fucking to schools. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so for eight years, I wore the tab on my arm. Yep. Because the KPOC patch has the tab permanently affixed. Eight years. I, w- I wore an airborne tab for 10 years. Yeah, 100% same way. <laughs> and never got a jump slot. And uh, at this point, I've just been like, had an opportunity to go. Fucking the world shut down. Didn't get to go. get. And at this point, I'm like, fuck it. Okay, I, I don't need a jump. I, it, the universe has decided that I know gravity fucking works. So <laughs> fuck it. You, everybody gets to jump at me. I don't give a shit. I don't. I, I've lost all interest. Yeah, our dad liked to, uh, cause so jazz. Do you know was why? Unit. Do, do you know why? Yeah, I'm the mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Can confirm because my mother was on birth control. I am the mistake. I know what it took to have you because I've been told. Oh, I'm glad you followed it up with that. <laughs> <laughs> that I was, got weird real quick. <laughs> I was told the steps that were go through to conceive you. Whoa. You were the chosen okay, one. That still got weird. Oh, no. <laughs> Trust me, it got real Dude, fucking weird. Step by step play no. how Justin was conceived. Do you want to know how it got real weird? Is like fucking ten years later, all the fucking stepmom porn became a thing. So, yeah. Oh, so, God. happy birthday, buddy. Wait, <laughs> anyways, what's, what's your age difference? This, Thirteen this, years. This took a turn. I mean, well, I haven't been this uncomfortable in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Is that? He's not my son. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you're trying to get. Not my I son. I trying to think how to word that. I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. You are the chosen one and I am the mistake. So things that people make their whole personality, boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, airborne school is one of them. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. You're just, yeah, the Maroon Beret in general. Just... <laughs> Oh, no, the best part was being on Fort Bragg. Oh, yeah. Yeah, be a K-POC member on Fort Bragg and not be, and have a unit that's supposed to wear. So my uniform- That would have been hard to do if you tried. You didn't. I, I flat out didn't. And this was before they changed. So the whole army went to Black Berets. I remember the day. So, and I belonged to a unit that was a jump unit, but I wasn't jump qualified. But the unit's uniform- was maroon berets which actually meant that according to the according to 670-1 i was supposed to be in the maroon beret i literally walked around fort bragg in a pc i wore my patrol cap and i oh they wouldn't let us once we made the switch nope oh that's okay so we were 100 no fucking way and i had my first sergeant came to me and said brim you know you're out of uniform and i was like you know i don't have jump wings right and he was like yeah but i was like we are on fort bragg north carolina the sign outside says home of the airborne. There is no way in hell. I am fucking walking around here in a maroon beret without airborne wings on. And I was like, so do whatever extra PT smoke me right here. I don't give a fuck. There's no way in hell. And I was on the hill cause I was special operations. So we were all up on the hill together. So it was all triple tabbers and airborne. And I was like, there's no fucking way I'm walking around in this hat. That says I'm a jumper and I'm not authorized to jump. So the 101st wears an airborne tab and their required dress uniform is jump boots with their class A's. And maroon berets. No. No, black berets, but they have to wear jump boots. Fuck that. Whether or not they're airborne qualified doesn't, does not matter one bit. Wow. It's true. I did not know that. No fucking way. So that's why when the RCPT thing came along. And they had, uh, they had the opportunity to go and it was supposed to be, it's three days, essentially the same course, just without the rest of the fucking army bullshit involved. And I was told that they would modify your file. Mm-hmm. And I was like, fucking, I'm in. For foreign wings. For foreign wings. For foreign it would wings. modify it that I was foreign yeah. wing authorized. It wouldn't show that I was airborne, but I was foreign wing authorized. I was like, fucking close enough supposed to go do this whole fucking thing and then COVID happened and it shut the fucking world down and I lost my jump opportunity and now every time I've had the opportunity to go something else in my real life has fucking come up and been like nope you can't go and I'm like the universe has spoken I'm yeah, just not meant to jump I'm just, I'm just not gonna jump 
They're like it just is what it is. It's, so it's my friends go down and they fucking jump and I just go like fucking Godspeed and I fucking I just drive on. I'm like I don't give a fuck anymore. Like I just, but you should just do free fall instead of static land. That's one thing. I'll just go up to Austin or San Marcos or Wherever. whatever the fuck There's it is. Around, yeah. I'll just fucking I'll class A and be like cool. The plane has to pull your cord. I get to pull my own. Like we're we're fucking we're gonna go that way. Like yeah, roughly but, the same thing. Yeah, you are the chosen one, and I am the mistake. So he still like to fuck when. So when I went to when I graduated airborne school, he only calls me when his car is broken. So <laughs> when I got graduated airborne school, my dad pinned me and handed me a maroon beret. And it had my unit's flash on it. And I was like, oh, fuck yeah. And then like we were like, ceremony ends, yeah. we leave. And I'm like, how'd you how'd you get the the flash for the beret? And he's like, oh, stop by your unit. And I was like, you fucking asshole. <sighs> and so the first day I show up, they're like, where the fuck is the colonel's kid? And I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, he uh, he enjoys he enjoys that. So John, would you like to tell me how I'm wrong? Or- I didn't say you were wrong. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah anyway somebody fucking sign this shit off cause I'm fucking I'm gonna go home and drink <laughs> uh, warfighter a wellness grow your ass off and ice tech, tech. freedomfriendstobacco.com yes <laughs> <laughs> or that that <laughs> It's more efficient. <laughs> yeah, really. So, not for not for anybody. Or just go to the Freedom Friends social media. There's a link tree. It has links to everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can do that too. <laughs> well, yeah, if you didn't catch the, the discount codes, go back to the beginning of the episode. If you got this far and you didn't hear it then, uh, I don't know how the fuck your phone works. Uh, <laughs> but it doesn't work the same way mine does. Uh, but either way, uh, we hope you enjoyed our master debate for this evening. Um, and the the... the bullshitting that happened afterwards i don't even know if we actually answered the question or not i'm pretty sure we handled that one already. okay cool yeah yeah. um but yeah go find us wherever you can find us and and do all the things with all of our sponsors and Uh, some reviews might be nice yeah give give some some reviews for all the sponsors um i'm going i'm getting there i'm getting there (laughs) (laughs) and and jazz wants everyone to know thank you for being (laughs) my freedom friend (laughs) <laughs> I feel like I did, I, did, I did not drink enough. I didn't keep up. It's Holy it. shit! I'm gonna raise my glass. It's empty. What the hell? Let's say thank you for being my freedom friends. Uh, thank your mom. <laughs> thank your friends, moms, especially. <laughs> Tell your friends. <laughs> Tell your friends, mom, that I said thanks. And there's a mediocre podcast out there with the mediocre host talking about mediocre shit. And, uh, yeah, yeah, three little things. That's it. I'm not even going to ask you fuck. Smoke on, drink on. God damn it, boys. Freedom the fuck on. on.